1996 express train home leaves at approximately 12 noon. As it moves with increasing speed, the passengers become less preoccupied with their surroundings. Green hills, red plains, blue waters, and purple skies fly by without being noticed. The images have been so countless in number that passengers can't help but shrug off the beauty that surrounds them. It should astound them and confound them. But the passing of the calendar months have made the passengers too fickle and too naive to even perceive that they have been misled and fed the images of God with each serving of that three-course routine. Until one day, one of the carts detaches from the rest. And dropping back on the tracks as fast as the beauty around them passes, the conductor looks in his rearview mirror and realizes that the train has an evident hole. It feels like a lack of soul it exists where a key cog once was. Yet the train keeps churning, keeps burning, and heading full speed down this thunderous road. The conductor, realizing that the cart is now long gone, wipes his brow and counts his remaining carts. 87. How lucky is he to have 87? He looks left toward the red plains and right toward the blue waters. They are infinitely more inspiring and seem much more worth admiring for him and his passengers. He looks not upon this beauty with hindered eyes, but instead with eyes wide open. For it's now that he realizes what this thing called brotherhood is. What this gift called brotherhood is.